Well, Google just dropped a pretty massive bombshell on the landscape of AI video and games. They did it all in like one swoop. And what they show us here today is the real end game of VO3. Today, we're getting our first look at Genie 3, a general purpose world model that can generate unprecedented diversity and interactive environments. And as we dig into it today, it, it might just have you saying, this changes everything. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I've been keeping a close eye on Google DeepMind's Genie project. This is uh, sort of a prompt to game model. It was first introduced in February of 2024. Definitely the germ of an idea, considering that the games were only playable for about one second. And so, you know, no marathon sessions with Genie 1. Shortly after that, we got a look at the AI Doom project, which to note was not Google but it did showcase some forward movement in terms of interactive video. Uh, that said, there were still problems, namely that of object permanence. Then in December of 2024, we got our first look at Genie 2. The big breakthrough with Genie 2 was its ability to take a static image and interpret it and extrapolate out a 3D environment. So essentially you could go wander around an image. That said, of course, there were still problems, uh, namely once again, that of object permanence. And uh, Genie 2 had the tendency to go a little mushy as it continued on in terms of its generation. Now, simultaneous to the Genie project, there is, of course, VO, namely VO2 and VO3. And in terms of video models, I would have to say that VO is probably the best at having like an intuitive understanding of physics. So essentially, by bashing Genie and VO together, like chocolate and peanut butter meeting for the first time, Google has created the first real-time interactive general purpose world model. They go on to say it goes beyond narrow world models that existed before. It's not specific to any particular environment. It can generate both photorealistic and imaginary worlds and everything in between. Obviously, this has a lot of implications going actually far beyond just filmmaking, video and games. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's take a look at some examples. Now, in terms of output length, uh, Genie 3 is about five times longer than Genie 2. Uh, the Genie 2 example, you could already start to see it's starting to soften up and kind of blob out, as I'd mentioned earlier, and uh, just ended. Whereas the Genie 3 output is you know, still pretty much going strong, uh, high level of fidelity, everything looks very stable. It is important to note, in case you haven't been completely up to speed on the Genie project, that, that this isn't being generated by like a game engine or anything. This is all video that's essentially being generated frame by frame based off of the previous frame. And obviously this is a video that is controllable. We can kind of see the arrows here in the Genie 3 example um, as we're kind of cruising along action button as well opening up into an entirely new environment that you can wander around in. And yes, it is promptable. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, an entirely new area, essentially based off of one input image. And while I'll say the game stuff is pretty impressive, it's actually when we start looking at video, uh, that's where things get a little bit on the mind blowing side. Take for example, this POV shot of someone painting a wall or watching paint dry, I'm not sure which, uh, odd choice Google. Uh, but for the most part, it does look like VO3 footage, um, except for the fact that it's controllable. You can even look around the environment, um, probably even walk out into that other room if you wanted. But here's the important part, as we turn around, all of our uh, paint strokes are essentially the ones that we had previous. So there is object permanence. Now I should note that it is not infinitely consistent. Uh, as they note, uh, environments largely remain consistent for several minutes with visual memory extending back as far as one minute ago. Still, that is a huge upswing from, well, February of 2024, where, uh, you know, wall painting the game only would have ran one second. They actually showcased a much longer memory test as well uh, with this classroom setting, uh, the Genie 3 memory test, and Apple, a double a handled coffee cup in a tree. Uh, they wander around the environment for a little while, which does look really good, by the way. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to scrub through. And uh, they return to the blackboard at the 41 second mark. And as you can see, uh, everything is still consistent, including our, you know, double handled coffee cup. Um, yeah, that's pretty great. Google notes that this consistency is actually emergent from the model and that unlike Gaussian splats, which basically, you know, take a bunch of photos and create a 3D representation out of that, Genie 3 creates the world from scratch and presents it frame by frame as video with a much longer understanding of past events, allowing it to predict essentially 
essentially future events. So it has more context about what it is that we're looking at and what it's presenting to you. And what's really wild about all of this is that we can essentially prompt for new and novel things within the video generation. Uh, the way they have this set up is kind of interesting. We get a short four second clip here, and then it kind of turns into a bit of a choose your own adventure. I presume that is just for de like demo purposes and that instead we will be able to prompt on our own. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, put a brown bear. That four second clip now becomes a 13 second clip in which indeed we have a brown bear walking in our environment kind of independently. Uh, we still do have controls over moving. Yeah, I would I would walk away from the brown bear as well. Those things, those things will eat you. Taking a look at this POV walking scene of somewhere in London. And if we, uh, we give the the chicken suit uh, runner example, we do indeed get a guy running in a chicken suit next to us, um, possibly going to Nando's, which I have not eaten at before, but I hear is very good. But if we do look at chicken suit guy, there is something very like VO3 feeling about him. Um, physics actually look really good here. Run cycle, walk cycle, uh, a little bit of uh, kind of weightlessness in his steps. But I mean, you know, for what this is doing, I'm not going to harp on it. Now, is it super perfect? Well, I mean, there is the dragon here, which does look a little bit more to me, at least on the VO2 text to video side. Again, not harping on it too much because what is happening here is kind of incredible. And again, going back to the fact that VO3 excels at world of physics, when we see you know, this jet ski drive past uh, and water spraying up, I mean, the water sprays onto the sidewalk and stays consistent. Like you can see the wet spots. That's crazy. A couple of quick notes before we move on to the AGI-ness of this all, because yeah, well, that's a thing. Um, first of all, G3 is outputting at 720p and 24 frames a second, uh, which um, wow, look at that exposure change. That's really kind of crazy. Just the fact that like the, the interplay between shadow and light, even just this clip, I mean, it really showcases the, the world modelness of all of this. Um, so anyhow, <laughs> looking at this sort of stuff, I mean, I can't help but think uh, two things. Well, holodeck and VR. Now, obviously on the VR front, uh, at generating at 720, that is not enough to essentially drive a stereoscopic image. Um, that said, it does look like we do actually finally have up, down, left, right uh, commands. So that is something that a lot of these models previous to now did not have it, it always kind of felt a little bit like you were playing the original castle wolfenstein that said maybe we'll get a vr experience out of it if google decides to bring back google cardboard uh this was actually real uh not an april fool's joke uh you could order one and like this cardboard box would show up and you pop your phone inside of it and you had like the cheapest uh vr headset of all time it was pretty cool Moving on to the AGI side of things, uh, in Genie 2, Google introduced SEMA, which was an agent that was kind of baked into Genie 2. Uh, it could either play the game along with you, kind of acting as an NPC, or even go through and play the game solo and kind of act as QC or like a bug quasher. Um, so of course they did implement it into Genie 3. So you can provide SEMA with instructions like approach the industrial mixer, go to the cooling racks, or walk to the glass case. And uh, Genie has no idea that SEMA is there nor what it's trying to accomplish. So uh, let's try walk to the glass case here. And uh, indeed, oh wow, look at that. SEMA has a reflection. That's pretty crazy. Here's another example at an outdoor market with the instructions of go to the baker. And indeed, um, you know, uh, SEMA knows to walk into that direction. Uh, Genie knows to provide video of, well, I wouldn't say those are necessarily like delicious bread rolls. They kind of look a little more on the potato side, but um, either way, they look carbolicious. In terms of where all of this lands on the path to AGI, well, it is an important step forward in that it teaches uh, a model a lot more about how the real world works, uh, both in terms of cause and effect, and uh, just even on a very simple level, like what a tree is. An interesting take on this is that you could say previous to this, uh, AI would be dreaming and that's why we're sort of prone to as much hallucination as we were. Whereas with Genie 3, it's more akin to lucid dreaming in which, you know, it is aware that it is dreaming and, you know, you as a user can modify that dream. In terms of more near-term and immediate ideas, well, we know that Genie 3 is capable of understanding, you know, 2D visual images uh, and has an understanding of 3D space. And while Google is sitting on a ton of this data, given Google Maps and Street View, it's not outside of the realm of possibility to, you know, plug together Genie, VO, 
and uh, Google Maps all together to create a you know an actual simulation of the real world. Now for the bad news, when do you get to play with it? Well, we we don't know. Uh, thus far, all of the Genie projects have actually been kept under lock and key. It is only available as a limited research preview to a small cohort of academics and creators. Uh, Big Daddy G, I do wanna let you know, I've been covering this since the beginning. So, you know, if you wanna holler at your guy, uh, drop me a G chat. G chat, does G chat still exist? <laughs> That said, don't lose all hope, considering that they do suggest that the plan is to open up uh, Genie world models to everyone at some point. Uh, this is something that we obviously have seen with VO. VO1 was never released, VO2 and 3 eventually were. Uh, gone are the days of Google announcing and never shipping. So yeah, this is a pretty big deal. And as always, kind of staggering to think this is the worst it will ever be. Uh, yeah, I had a bunch of other stuff that I was planning on doing today, but then this came along and pretty much like wiped the slate clean. So I'll, I'll try to follow up on everything else that I was going to get to later on this week. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.